The vaccination scheme's going rather well here in the UK, to such an extent that we're going to be allowed to start travelling again. The UK government has announced a green list of 12 destinations to which we are allowed to travel and return without quarantine, and it's a curious mix of places. For example, the Faroe Islands are not typically a beach destination for we Brits. The Falkland Islands. I don't know anybody that's wanted to go there. And when you're down in the Falkland Islands, you can travel to St Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands. You have to take a boat to get there. Typically you do a cruise. Similarly, Gibraltar. You generally go there, but you pop across to Spain. The idea of going to Gibraltar and remaining in Gibraltar, that's peculiar. You will note that many of those places are islands. In other words, they've shut the borders, they've prevented COVID arriving, they're going to work hard at uh, vaccination. Obviously, we Brits in the very near future will essentially be 100% vaccinated. And off we go to the races. And yet one name missing from that list is Taiwan. Taiwan is an island. It has stellar COVID results. They absolutely know their stuff after their nasty scares with previous diseases, best part of 20 years ago now. And you have to suspect the reason Taiwan is not on the list is because Taiwan does not exist. Technically. Diplomatically. And that might strike you as peculiar. The probability is that while you've heard of Taiwan for certain, you may not know its history. I'll give you a very brief potted history. And then I'll refer you to a video by The Economist, which has done a superb job of summing up Taiwan's history. The gist of it is back in the 1940s, China had a civil war. Mao chased Chiang Kai-shek out of China and he departed and uh, headed for Taiwan. So you had the nationalists in Taiwan, you had the communists in China. And Chiang Kai-shek in Taiwan said he was the rightful ruler of China. And now the situation has flipped completely. So we recognize China, PRC, as China, and we refer to Taiwan as Taiwan. Politically, Taiwan is out on a limb. The thing is, Taiwan is of critical importance. The reason you've heard of Taiwan is that a huge number of IT products are either designed in Taiwan and manufactured in Taiwan or designed in Taiwan and manufactured at least in part in China. In their last week's issue, The Economist had a cover labeling Taiwan as the most dangerous place on the planet. In the late 1940s, Mao was all for reuniting uh, China, so basically invading Taiwan, so that's 70 years ago. The snag being that Taiwan's about 110 miles from China. And at the time, China didn't have a fleet as such. Taiwan was militarily as strong as China, despite being much smaller. Uh, then the Korean War flared up, the Americans arrived with a fleet, and the Chinese called off the idea 70 years ago. Since then, there's been a huge amount of change, and China has, of course, risen as a global power. The Taiwanese are well prepared for the idea that China might invade. They have a lot of soldiers for a relatively small nation, and they have an awful lot of aircraft, guns, and tanks. But of course, far fewer than the Chinese. We Brits, we have our history with China. Many years ago, the Opium Wars, and then subsequently Hong Kong. So we hung on to Hong Kong for many years, and then we returned Hong Kong to the Chinese. That was meant to be one country, two systems. Recent news will show you how well that worked out. In the event that China PRC decided to reunite Taiwan with the motherland, well, that would be the end of Taiwan as a separate entity. The blunt question is, why should we, the public in Europe, why should we much care what happens in Taiwan? It's jolly unfortunate if people cease to have their own democratic self-determination, and I hope that Taiwan continues to be an independent nation. But in the event it wasn't, what would it actually matter to us? And the selfish answer is TSMC. TSMC is of critical importance and fabs basically most of the chips that we want for most of our products. Without TSMC, Apple, Qualcomm, AMD for starters, hugely problematic. Obviously, we know what happened to Huawei when they were cut off from TSMC's chips. Their smartphone business has essentially stalled. Other smartphone manufacturers have picked up on the chips that Huawei would have had, but Huawei is an example of what can happen if you don't have access to TSMC's chips. 
You can make the case that if Intel hadn't mucked up so royally over the past few years and TSMC hadn't seized the opportunity to rise and become the most critical foundry on the planet, that we might be in a slightly different situation. But we are where we are. As things stand, if there's any conflict on Taiwan that resulted in problems with TSMC, that would be absolutely awful for us all. And you can see the Taiwanese know this full well, and TSMC is regarded as absolutely critical infrastructure. And you can see how this plays out in the numbers. So we learned recently that TSMC will spend 100 billion US dollars in the next three years, of which 30 billion will be this year. That's either 2021 or Q1 21 through to Q1 22. Uh, which leaves then another 70 billion US in the next two years. So monumental sums of money. Meanwhile, Intel's building two new fabs at its Ocotillo campus in Arizona. Their capex for 21 is 19 to 20 billion US dollars. Last year they spent 14 billion, the year before that 16 billion. So Intel has been spending fortunes. TSMC is going to be spending something like 50% more than Intel. Over in China, SMIC is investing 2.35 billion in Shenzhen in a fab that should come online in 2022. But the Chinese are currently uh, a number of generations uh, in terms of fabrication behind Taiwan and even behind Intel. How long that will continue remains to be seen. After all, SMIC had their um, legal woes, shall we say, with uh, with the TSMC. A couple of years ago, TSMC won that and then won again and got a significant sum of money. But quite clearly, if the Chinese can raise SMIC up to the leading edge, that will change things significantly. TSMC is building a fab in Arizona. You can be absolutely certain there is no way that that is going to be a leading edge fab. Whether when it is uh, built, probably in a couple of years time, and starts to churn out chips, whether that will then be turning out five nanometer chips, for example, i.e. highly useful chips, but not chips that will then be used by the likes of, say, Apple. The idea that TSMC will build a fab in Arizona that will be on the same process node as the fabs in Taiwan, I cannot imagine that for one moment. I'm sure the Americans would love it, but I can't see it. And similarly, the Europeans, the Europeans have suddenly decided that uh, making chips would be a jolly good idea. So in December 2020, six months ago now, the EU announced they would deliver a two nanometer fab somewhere in the EU, which means you've got every single nation in the EU now wanting a piece of that, by 2030, with a proposed budget of 145 billion euros. Now that sounds nice enough, but in 2030, two nanometer sounds like it will be useful uh, as to whether that's a uh, cutting edge at that point goodness alone knows whether this fab will ever happen who knows who will build it who will run it how it will happen haven't got a clue uh, clearly asml in the netherlands is within the eu so you can see the eu thinks right we want chips we've got all the money because we can take money from uh, all the member nations of the eu uh, where this figure of 145 billion euros comes from, I have absolutely not the first clue. Uh, that's now nine years away. We'll, I'll believe it when I see it. But in the context of Taiwan, nine years is two lifetimes away. All the intelligence that's being publicly reported suggests that the Chinese will be in a position where if they choose to invade Taiwan, five to six years would be the kind of uh, uh, time span we're looking at. And the concern obviously is uh, who will come to Taiwan's rescue should they need it. Will the Americans? Could the Americans? It's looking at the moment less and less likely by the day. Clearly the Americans would need to use carrier fleets. Uh, Japan is relatively speaking up the road. But the Chinese are flexing and they have missiles that can take out aircraft carriers apparently. Give it five or six years, you can bet your boots they will. They will also by then have uh, far stronger carrier fleet power. So the Americans will be less able to project power and support Taiwan if the Americans wanted to be able to do that. We know who the current president is in the US and we can guess who the next one is going to be when she rises from being vice president to being president. 
is she going to be rushing to send American fleets to support Taiwan? Blood and treasure to support silicon? I have to say it sounds unlikely, but uh, I could obviously be entirely wrong. So at the moment, the Chinese are showing patience. President Xi has said that uh, Taiwan is not a problem that should be left to the next generation. Uh, he's not a young man. He obviously has some years left in him. Uh, but how many years? How many years will he be running the show in China? I mean, 10 years would be quite a stretch. And obviously we, we can't base any speculation on history because the system over there has changed. The suggestion is that in the time that President Xi remains President of China, that he wants to resolve the issue of Taiwan. And it would sound as though by 2030, at the absolute outside, one way or another, that situation is going to change. The question has to be, what happens in the next, say, two years? Will TSMC continue to reign as the supreme foundry on the planet, or will Samsung rise in that time and at least match TSMC? Will Intel be able to launch a foundry business and get the latest nodes working? Two or three years, it seems ambitious to say the least. But what about that five to six year time span? Well, that's far enough out that frankly, anything might happen. TSMC might muck things up and uh, drop down the rankings. Samsung, the Chinese, Intel might move up. But right now, while TSMC is the leading foundry on the planet, Taiwan has unparalleled strength at this very moment. That might change, and I have to say, it fills me with deep concern. So it comes down to the Americans. It comes down to the current President of America, but more importantly, it comes down to the next President of America. And we know her name, but we don't know what she might do in that situation. All we can do is cross our fingers.